Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about Mozilla and OpenOffice, and uh, I guess most of the problems we have with them is something that uh, anybody with big packages like that are going to have. So we're going to introduce these packages slightly, uh, how we got involved in them. So for example, for the Mozilla package, my first contact was actually six years ago. And at the time, I didn't really want to uh, package these things. I didn't even get involved in Debian for that. But uh, at the very beginning, I, I was packaging extensions and uh, for uh, Mozilla at the time, and then there was Firebird getting in, and we had to get the extensions working in Firebird, and it was mixing some support, so I sent a patch. And well, you know, now I am maintaining all these things, or maybe not, because basically I opened the packages in March. But, well, it's a big fail because I did some uploads. So Mozilla in Debian is basically all these things, and I already simplified a lot because that's what is maintained by the team. Well, we are free. I'm doing most of the, of the stuff. Um, so this is all the Mozilla stuff. Like we have libraries here. Um, we have iSAPE and iSDOV, which are uh, the... the um, Mozilla Suite and uh, the mailer, Iceweasel, which is Firefox, basically, and ZooRunner, which is uh, um, a kind of framework to make applications like Iceweasel. Um, we would hope that IceApe and IceDov would be built on top of ZooRunner so that the security support would be better, but it's not possible. And all these are all using uh, the Mozilla framework in some ways. So applications like Epiphany are using the embedding uh, API to get uh, um, a web view in a window. So you have Epiphany, Galeon, uh, Life Area, uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, there are another category which are actually doing only um, like a binding. Uh, for um, for this uh, embedding API to uh, certain languages such as Perl, Python, Mono, stuff like that, and a bunch of plugins. And unfortunately, since I'm basically the only one to uh, do stuff, uh, that's what we cannot do. So, uh, for example, the security support is not done the Debian way. Uh, which would be like just porting the, the actual security patches, but uh, uh, upstream is actually doing like a big mix between security and um, and um, yeah, the feature changes and, and stuff like that. So we're basically packaging every new upstream version for stable, which is not something we're doing normally in Debian. But, well, we cannot do much better. Uh, we don't really test uh, widely the, the security releases while we should. Uh, we have a really big problem with the BTS. Uh, if you accumulate all the a ice, ape, ice, dove, ice, weasel, ice, everything, and ZooRunner pa uh, packages uh, bugs, we have more than a thousand. Well, t 1,200. Um, we could and we should, but we can't do better integration within Debian, which would mean like having a um, plugin system. Like if you have, if you go to a page where you don't have the plugin, you could get the plugin from APT. Uh, Ubuntu has something like that. We could port it, but well, it's still something we ha still need time for that. Uh, and we really should package upstream beta releases in experimental much earlier than we currently do, but I don't have the time for that. So 
well, basically, it's the status for uh, Mozilla in Debian. So I, I leave Rene for. Well, um, I'm going to briefly talk about how I got involved in this package. Um, I've looked around in the archives, and the first sign of me on some open office mailing list was in 2002 where I uh, just tried to get the preliminary packages which are, were available at the time and get the German version built of it because I wanted it in German. Um, and the build failed as we see there. And um, yeah, I asked for help. Okay, a few months, la few months later I actually did my first small contribution, where I wrote uh, main pages and fixed some Lindsay and stuff, permissions, and so on. Um, that's the first uh, public sign I was in a uh, in a change log entry. Well, this uh, this grab is a bit a bit greedy, but it, it should show what I uh, what, is, what I was aiming at. The um, packaging started with a three-person team: Chris, Jan, Hendrik, and me. Peter, Peter was out before I even joined. And uh, with more or less frequent patches from uh, from other people. But people get busy, and now it's a one-man team because Jan was went busy with university. Chris went busy with his own company, and I'm left. Now I'm maintaining OpenOffice.org and libraries. It uh, Accumulates to to uh, it needs to run, including Java stuff, because as many of you, of you might know, OpenOffice.org is a big user of Java. Many, many Java libraries use for more or less important features. I actually am able to keep up, but really barely. And with immense, immense work, and even though I don't really use that that package, so uh, I, I, I every few months need it for some presentation or at, at work for some for some stuff, but I don't regularly regularly use use it. Um, I find the LFH. I don't remember when anymore. I forgot to put it on the slide. Um, there was some replies to it, but um, when people came to me and asked me, okay, can you please explain me how I, how I start, um, I guess there's some pointers, and then they were never, <laughs> so, uh, many of them were never seen again, probably because they just got scared of the, of the packaging, of the code, of the complexity. So uh, what eases the stuff a bit is that we currently are uh, having a, a repository which um, enables us to share patches or uh, even packaging stuff, packaging concepts with other distributions. The, ma the most important one is, uh, is another guy with Susie. So, um, if I am doing some adaptions to packaging for integration, the Susie one can can uh, can adapt it for for their packages and vice versa, which um, in many cases simply helps because uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel again. Yeah. So that's the short direct deduction. Yeah, that, that's the part where you you get involved. Uh, so we're going to uh, ask you what you think. Uh, about these 
these things. So how can we get more developers, Debian developers involved in these packages? How can we get more users involved? Because we actually need users to test the things. Because we cannot test everything. And what can we do to be more appealing? Because, you know, when you have a package which is like a m more than a million lines of code, anybody would be scared. And it's normal to be scared. But we both are uh, the proof that you don't really need to know everything since the beginning. Because, well, we just got involved like it was kind of random. A and we're now crawling in bugs. But, <laughs> but actually, at the beginning, we were clueless. Please. Hello. hello. Is this on? It is. Excellent. Um, hello. Um, okay, I, c I can um, give you a bit of feedback. Um, I've contributed a little bit to the open office packaging um, briefly. Now I was I was getting paid for it, but <laughs> um, that helps. <laughs> uh, which it should. But getting um, there's a really steep um, learning curve in contributing to, to the open office packaging to um, to give I don't know if everyone sort of knows quite if, if you want to start fixing bugs on open office um, at, at the moment I don't know if, if this is going to change or if it's still the case but the OO build tree is in SVN still? It's, it's in git right now but it's, it's still a separate checkout yeah. um, so the and the Debian branch is in BZR. And then, so you need to check out the OO build tree, check out the BZR tree, um, figure out and learn how those work. Uh, building the thing takes, uh, on our machines, you know, on a sort of normal PC, it took, well, we needed to run it overnight. Um, and a built source tree is about 15 gigabytes, uh, which gives you an idea of sort of the scale involved here. So it's it's a big, big project. Um, in terms of actual, the packaging wasn't actually too complicated. I mean, that, that, that was understandable. Yeah, well, ex ex except the point that you need to understand the uh, relationship with, between open, uh, between Orbit and the whole of the system. Right, right. Um, so you can't just, ha currently you can't just hack away. You have to unpack the tarball because it's a tarball in tarball system, so that should be changed sometime anyway. But uh, it's currently is not possible. I mean, that that would be a great thing to change. So, really, um, if I could ask a question, it would be what what can you reasonably expect? How do you want people to contribute? Is it fixing upstream bugs in OpenOffice? Well, I. Personally, don't really care because um, the things the upstream bugs, of course, would be nice. Um, but what I currently do because of uh, limited time is uh, at most times I simply forward bugs upstream and wait until upstream fixes it or not. Um, so that, of course, would be nice. Yeah. Um, this shouldn't mean that uh, people shouldn't help or don't need to help with uh, simplifying or improving the packaging or doing BTS, uh, BTS triage because there is, I'm quite sure there are many uh, bugs in the, in the BTS which are simply, which we would simply be able to close if we had a deeper look. Uh, but I don't have time for it either. So. I'm currently barely keeping up with new bug reports, and uh, there was uh, one effort of Leo Kaplan where he uh, did uh, an extraordinary work for for closing really old bugs which don't apply anymore to the uh, Lenny release. Um, yeah, but currently it's it's more or less. 
help me this in any part. I don't ca I can can't don't I am not able to pinpoint one uh, one part which uh, Basi basically any help would be appreciated. Well, the problem is that um, um <laughs> I found, uh, you know, I still find it difficult. I, actually, one of the biggest problems I had was that any any work, by the time I'd actually managed to fix a problem, Renee had already committed it to uh, to be set up. But um, uh, that 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 was for easy ones, but uh, yeah, it's uh, that's quite a bit of a problem because um, for packaging stuff or whatever, I'm actually try to be quite fa quite fast to fix the packaging bug. For absolute bugs, it's very different. <laughs> I don't want to monopolize this. Um, my my, I would I would suggest that if you could get um, the open office Debian packaging, if you could perhaps get it all into Git and have a branch of the OO build Git repository, then that would make a difference, an immediate difference, I think. Yeah, I I uh, also thought of going away from the uh, tower in tower thing sometime. The problem is that as long we are using our build, which is using the uh, tower in tower system, we can't easily switch. But uh, we of course could, could do the first step and uh, put both trees into one gate and mirror our build in our repository. That would, would be the first step in that direction, yes. Come on. <laughs> no idea? So yeah, just to underline some of the stuff, um, there was an earlier boff uh, yesterday, I think it was, that we were talking about this similar sort of problem, but specifically for bugs in large packages. Um, and one of the things that we, well, one of the things that I've been hoping to do and uh, was mentioned as well by other contributors is that we need to try to organize uh, or set up a field that indicates which bugs require action. Because um, that's one of the problems right now is that it makes it a little bit more difficult for people to get started. Um, and so that's something that w hopefully we'll be able to change. Uh, however, as far as getting more triagers uh, involved in the process, that's something that, um, I mean, I don't really have a good idea yet on what to do. One of the things that was thought about was better documentation uh, overall for what triagers should be doing. Um, and it also may be better to see a little bit of documentation as to per package <laughs> specific st <laughs> <laughs> as to per package specific stuff that maintainers could do. So for example, especially for the big packages that have lots of bugs. Um, it's to sort of clue main, or clue triagers in. This is the sort of thing that you should be doing. These are the areas or the people that you can talk to, the coordinating channels and stuff like that. That's not immediately obvious to a brand new contributor, especially one who, it, I mean, I'm sort of envisioning that most of the triagers that you're going to get, this is going to be their first time contributing to Debian. So they may not have any idea where the development channels are. So some uh, place where they can be pointed to um, to get started, you know, triaging bugs in the packages that they use, for example, uh, would be helpful. Um, so it, just some thoughts out there. A and again, if there's something that anybody who maintains large packages or people who don't uh, find that suboptimal in the BTS, uh, file wishlist bugs against dev bugs. Speaking of the BTS, there's Unfortunately, one big problem with these big packages, when you have more than 500 uh, bugs in one package, uh, basically the users don't even uh, look at the old bugs, so they report the same bugs again and again, and it adds up to the, to the noise already. So it doesn't really help, but actually there's not much we can do about that. Yeah, so one of the things there that probably needs to be cleaned up is there currently is a full text search uh, of the BTS that's actually fairly advanced. Um, so if we ask that people put 
the error message or something in, especially for large packages, when they're reporting the bug in report bug. Um, that may help with this issue slightly, because at least it'll have a chance of pulling up the right bug that theirs is a duplicate of, because uh, the error messages are rel usually kind of unique, uh, but at least something that's easy to search for if you have no clue what the actual problem is. Is there any way you could find dupes of bugs? So, so yeah, the, I mean, if somebody tells me a good algorithm to run over a set of packages to point out possible dupes, then I'd be glad to, to look at implementing that for a set of bugs. But right now, I don't have a, a good idea of how to do that besides, uh, I mean, looking at the differences in entropy between two reports or something silly like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, if you tell me a good way to do it or give me pseudocode or something that actually works, then yeah, I, I'd, I'd consider figuring out how to group bugs in the, uh, in the package report output. Or maybe it might be a good idea to actually get more users involved to just um, hack a splash screen into OpenOffice and um, Firefox, which actually tells people to help. Because, um, of course, there will be something we will drop again when, when a stable release is coming. But um, why not simply add an additional, like, we really need help. Because an RFH bug is basically no one sees this kind of stuff. You actually need to get to a rather obscure place in the beginning. WPP stuff. Oh, okay. it's still working. Um, and I don't think many people actually see this, so maybe it's simply also in need of, of increasing visibility. I, I would suppose that at least half of all the Debian developers are not even aware that there's um, help needed for OpenOffice or uh, all the whole Ice Weasel stuff. Because um, quite a lot of people aren't following like Planet Debian Orc or, or, or other means like the, for example, any mailing list where you've asked for help. So what are you proposing to do instead? Uh, adding a splash screen to uh, both Ice Weasel and OpenOffice that uh, when you start it, that it points to this um, package needs help, please, please get in touch with us. Isn't that a bit uh, in intrusive? Well, I, I mean, if I'm a user, I would be bothered by it, I even if it's a uh, noble uh, yeah, reason, but, but if you have a splash screen anyway, you can just tag the sentence in. If you have no splash screen anyway, okay, it might be annoying, but uh, if you have one anyway, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, well, there's there's one on OpenOffice. There's not one in Ice Whistle. But you have a start page, so. Yeah, but people can change it. Oh, sure. But what you want to do is when they, the default, it starts up once, and you tell them about it, and if they change it immediately, well, you've done your best. I mean, yeah. you don't need to continuously nag them about it. Just tell them once, and then hopefully they'll learn. That's a good idea. Not sure it was, uh, if it was already uh, mentioned, but uh, well, as you have many bugs, may maybe you should try to put on the side the, the few ones that are easy to start with for, so that uh, well, people can get used to help you and not directly be confronted to difficult RC bugs. Or, well, so it's uh, the, the same idea as that well, of the Debian love or whatever it was called. So you pick up a few bugs that where people can help, you tag them with a user tag and you make some publicity around that URL to, so that they can start. Uh, well. it, it's something that can be generali generali generalized for all package, uh, but well, we are never, we're never able to commit to it. I don't know what we can do to, to improve ourselves on that point, but
nothing more. Um, I'm not sure about users, but um, developers would probably see the package tracking system, and um, I think the RFH does snap on that. But maybe also, I think you can add static boxes in there. So maybe a link, you know, explicit sentence that we really do need help. It's not just this RFH. And here's a link to some handy documentation about exactly how you go about getting involved. Because I think getting over that inertia is the problem. Well, if you have filed a request for help on the WNPP stuff, it automatically appears on the PDS with a direct link to the bug report, so you can read it, what they've wrote, and where they need help. And well, so basically, it's already done, and I don't think it made a significant difference. <laughs> the problem, the problem with that is that before you look at the PDS, you, uh, when you look at the PDS of the packet, you are already interested. You are already already um, wanting to ha ha at least have a look what the state of the packet is. Um, some people might not know yet, and uh, if they don't look at the PTS, they won't see the image. Well, it's it's the people who are already interested who you want to actually get the last bit of the way. I mean, so I've looked at uh, a lot of these RFH bugs, and you see that firstly they're generally really old. Um, and people have already replied to it. So you don't really know whether it's up to date and there's no further information about, you know, or links to exactly where to start. And admittedly, you might then see that there are 1,200 open bugs. But, um, but apart from that, it's, it's getting those sort of people that last step of the way that you want to look at. So do, do you think it would be helpful if the request for help bug has already uh, gotten some replies but uh, no new maintainer came from it to, to close it and open a new one with, with the current information? Um, uh, poss possibly. I mean, it's, uh, I, 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 I mean, it sounds like a really stupid idea, but um, if, if it's really stale, then I think, you know, find some way of making it really appear, you know, now. Now you we really do need someone now. Uh, yeah. Uh, one idea I had is, uh, well, to really, it's the spirit of Stephen Love stuff, say, is to write uh, some sort of C-Stray applet for potential complete contributors who are interested to help but not know really where to start. They could uh, just pick up a few skills that they have, I mean, in programming language or uh, I don't know what language they do speak and everything that we can might need to direct them somewhere to help. And uh, then I could pick up tasks and we could, well, based on the list of packages that they have and the skills that they have, uh, we could easily implement stuff like oh, well, triage one bug a day or stuff like that, which has been quite popular uh, in Ubuntu. They did several events like that, uh, which was five bug a day uh, for them. But uh, so it's an idea that I would like to explore. But well, as most of my projects, so <laughs> I don't have enough time to do them all at the same point in time. And, but I don't know what others think of such an idea. It would be interesting maybe to use this opportunity to discuss it because uh, I think it would be really interesting. I mean, uh, at least we could, instead of promoting each sub-project separately, we could work together and promote only this applet and uh, maybe have a broader impact and still uh, be able to focus on specific uh, sub-projects depending on the time. Because, well, uh, we could organize campaign. Well, th the applet would contact some Debian server, and we, we the Debian server would give hints. Okay, this week we want uh, so many people looking at uh, this package specifically, and uh, and we can uh, even assign bugs if possible. And, well, I mean, we have so many stuff to do that we can surely find some way to <laughs> assign non-conflicting tasks to many people. 
um, well, I don't know. Any, uh, if anyone wants to comment on the idea, does it sound really strange to to you? I, <coughs> I actually had a similar idea to have um, an application that would get a bug, like a bug a day or something like that, uh, for people that opt in to uh, help. But uh, I don't really know if it would work out. I'm not sure. But it's, it's worth trying, but uh, well, we also need time to do that. <laughs> And we also we already lack time to do the other stuff, so it's actually very hard to to begin to do something. Well, I understand the concern, but well, uh, we always you always have to keep up with the urgent stuff first. But uh, any sane maintenance requires some preparation, long-term preparation. So uh, it might take time, but if you if if we decide to each to take one or two hours a week to prepare this, we, we might do it in a few months. Uh, even if a few RC bugs are fixed later, well, no big deal. <laughs> uh, if it really helps on the long term. Can I ask him, um, how are you feeling about this talk? I mean, are you feeling confident that you will get more developers and users involved at the moment? Well, I actually got some help. Uh, <coughs> somebody uh, came to me, uh, Anibal introduced to me, uh, somebody who would uh, like to adopt Zoolrunner. So, uh, I actually thought at the beginning that the orphaning thing wouldn't wouldn't work, and well, it appears it had worked. So maybe that's the solution: orphaning the big packages. <laughs> yeah, my my fear in this case was uh, I was very to try it because uh, I would have guessed that uh, no one would have picked it up anyway. It might be untrue, but uh, that, pe that the, the size of the package scares so many people away at first. Um, I don't know. F for your question, I really hope that uh, people here or people seeing it in the stream or in a video later will uh, at least consider to, uh, to help a bit. But you, you can't be sure in uh, any case. Who's using Ice Whistle here? Everyone. Okay, so who's using OpenOffice? <laughs> so why aren't you helping? <laughs> because you can't install Ice Whistle with a BBKG. <laughs> I mean, that's the point, isn't it? That these two packages are actually, uh, they're huge, and they're also uh, two of the flagship products for free software. I mean, uh, and the quality of these packages really affects how users find Debian. Uh, so maybe there's some motivation there to actually uh, get more involved. Exactly, right. Well, one of the sad things is that <coughs> if you do the count, uh, I actually ran, ran a slog count yesterday on uh, Zoolrunner. And uh, if you remove all the stuff that is not really Mozilla stuff, um, it's more than two million lines of code. And well, according to uh, the, the, there was a talk on, on the first day on, on Debian, and we have three 
100 million lines of code in Debian. So the ratio is quite huge, actually. And if you see that we are a 1,000 developers, the ratio is, well, it's kind of strange, actually, because you have these huge packages where, where you only have a really small amount of developers taking care of them. But, well, you know. I remember at Foz Gym a couple of years ago that Sun Microsystems, um, uh, Simon Foz was actually claiming that, you know, Sun had contributed some huge proportion of Debian because um, in terms of lines of code, um, they'd, I think they'd done, uh, I think it was mostly open office and a huge amount, but they, they made a, quite a big deal about um, their contributions <laughs> oh, and Java. It's quite interesting, this remark, and it might, merging that with, with the Omer, uh, your other idea, like t saying that uh, uh, the solution is to keep the package orphaned, maybe it's true. Maybe we should l keep it on the list of orphaned package until we have 10 developers for maintaining Mozilla, because, well, Mozilla is 1% of the code base and we have uh, 1,000 1, developers. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Because, well, true if you see someone maintaining oh it's good why should I look further but if you really say well this package really needs five people or seven people to maintain on, on a regular basis maybe we we can find more can I ask about um, um, I think the current um, Debian PP bug that with Zorwinner being orphaned was about these copyright statements. Oh, I, I haven't kept track. Th of that's system. actually part of the, of the 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 reason. So it's actually more than that. Because yeah. Well, it was the trigger uh, because, well, I was pissed off by the discussion at the time, but it was something I was considering for for quite a long time, and that was that did just put me in in the situation that I really wanted to do it. Because before I couldn't, but you know, if you get back here, you see I often the packages, but I did 14 uploads, <laughs> and it's not even including Ice Whistle because I did some for Ice Whistle too. So you know, it, I I cannot stop doing it. <laughs> I, I mean, just care too much. Maybe I shouldn't, but I mean, I think you both do great work for Debian. It's really, um, really useful, uh, you know, necessary. But that that may be the problem, actually. If I mean, yeah, the problem is if you stop, then uh, yeah, we're kind of screwed. Uh, so, um, Maybe we could we should start to do bad stuff so that people <laughs> would like to fix them. Yeah, just uh, uh, do. Um. How much time have we got? Five. Five minutes. <coughs> um, I really don't know how to arrange it uh, within Debian, but thing is it's like you say you should get more support from from the c community because yeah, like appealing for users to to get involved and help that's important but this is like a very long run solution well you are drowning right now and so the community should support you and there's two things that came to my mind. Uh, one is like, Tim, you said you were paid for what you were doing. Perhaps that can help, say, for students who are involved in Debian. Maybe they can be paid to do some work during the summer or something like that. But what I think should be arranged somehow is to to have a concentrated effort to clean up bugs that are 
that I understand is part of what really dragging you down and and making it harder for you to make progress and maybe decide on like a concentrated period of time that people would contribute to dealing with a certain package, cleaning it up. Sometimes it's not even fixing bugs as much as I understand, just checking if they're still relevant or stuff like this and make an operation kind of stuff of concentrated effort from developers who know something about uh, the Debian tools and that. Uh, I don't really know how to advertise it and how to make it happening, but I think that's something that should be done by the community because especially these two packages are very important for Debian. Debian without it will be crippled. Sorry, I'm monopolizing this almost. Um, actually, that's, that's a really good point. In terms of getting users involved rather than, de rather than developers, um, bug triaging is the obvious first place for people to start. And if you look at, um, the, well, the, the big place where I have, where I've seen this happen is in GNOME actually, where um, they really encourage users to triage their huge collection of bugs. Um, <laughs> Maybe using the confirm tag on on bugs which have been triaged and have a mass um, a mass sort of confirmation that that all these bugs did exist. Um, that that could that could be helpful if you have advertise it with your blogs. And um, I know people do read them, uh, read Planet Debian, and um, appeal to to users directly to start uh, uh, trying to reproduce these things or tag them either confirmed or and re reproduce but all more in favour. Take um, because um, if I uh, forward some bug, I, ju I just mark it as forwarded and be done with it. Um, sometimes I simply also for if, if I don't forward a bug, but because it's packaging or whatever, um, I sometimes forgot the, the confirm tag. Yes, so uh, I have to bit uh, to be a bit more disciplinary to add a confirm to every bug here. So. Yeah, maybe we can get some help from Don there. <laughs> uh, I'll talk to you later about about something I think. Feel free to ask questions too in my talk in about an hour or so. Well, thank you, everybody.